you describe the group that you guys have found these last six games that just went straight here? Um, I just think that uh, it's our defense, and our defense is really – um, helping our offense. But when you start out the game on the runs that we have on the defensive end of the floor and kind of taking them out of it, and then we have two of the greatest shooters. So screening for them, getting them shots, um, it's good. Draymond has always talked about, I guess a couple guys on the team have always talked about just like the desire and hunger to play defense and where that comes from. He starts way before that. I mean, stuff. Has that always been something that you, as a big as a player, have enjoyed? Um, yeah, I think um, just blocking shots, um, that's something I've always enjoyed doing. But this year, just having a big emphasis on guarding on the perimeter. Um, and I think that's where the next step in my, my game that I want to take and challenge myself to guard some of these guys. And so just proving to myself that I can do it. But yeah, overall, I just think when our team has that defensive minded um, game plan, um, it's great for us. How comfortable do you feel offensively? I mean, career high 20 points tonight. Um, just how comfortable are you feeling? Not only reading, you know, your scoring opportunities, but also kickouts and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. It seems like you're comfortable with that, that too. Um, I'm just taking what the defense gives me. Um, staying aggressive, but at the same time knowing that if a guy comes in, um, kicking it out because we got shooters everywhere on the floor, or or a guy diving. So, um, but yeah, just doing my part. When Clay gets hot like he did in that first half, how much fun is it to be playing with him? Oh, it's great. Um, Clay, whenever whenever he sees that first one go in, just going and hunting him and just trying to screen for him because at the end of the day, I know one of those times I'll be able to get a slip like I did with CP. Clay kind of started the Trace Jackson Davis all-rookie team push. <laughs> um, is that something that's on your radar, and is that a goal of yours? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I just go out there and play as hard as I can, um, and then I let that do the talking. So. <laughs> All right, are we good? What do you think the uh, Trace Draymond front court pairing has done for the defense? I mean, it's no secret we are a smaller team in general. Um, early in the year, before the, uh, you know, Draymond missed some games, there was you know a little bit of him at the five or a lot of him at the five, and even when he came back, <clears throat> and he's obviously capable of doing that. But on a night-to-night basis, uh, it's helpful to have you know that presence in there. Same thing Loon's done for us for you know so many years. Um, Trace has filled that role, it gives Draymond a little bit more freedom to you know. Be a pest out there, being you know help side, be able to attack the ball, knowing that there's some a presence on you know behind him. Trace has done an unbelievable job of learning how to be aggressive and pick and choose the spots on how to protect the rim and just play sound defense. And then we're trying to fly around around that, and it even helps to have Wiggs, you know, applying so much ball pressure to their primary score. So pieces are you know fit. How comfortable do you sense Trace is becoming on the offensive end as well, not just finishing, but knowing when to kick, kick out the shooters and whatnot? He's seen the pictures really well, and it's a you know a message and a reminder for him to even be a little bit more aggressive. You know, looking to attack the rim, especially if they're going to try to sell out and taking our threes away and either blitzing the ball screen. He's fully capable of catching. He's got good good feet, good feel. Um, he made a kick out pass to Clay. Off a drop down pass, he finished. He obviously had 20 tonight, so it was um, a great display of feel in, in that respect of him picking and choosing what, what he wants to do when he gets the ball. Isn't it nice to know, at least from here out, you'll way more than likely be in at least a top 10 seed, so now you can kind of start looking up more than just a, a, a bottom line? I think for us, we just have to. Whatever the motivation has been for each one individually, whether you're looking at below or up or wherever you're looking, keep looking there because it's a matter of us maintaining this momentum because more than likely it's going to be, you know, you have to win one game to stay alive, you know, in a couple of weeks. So I don't really care what anybody's looking at. Just keep our focus on what we've been doing. As a result of being able to to show we're we're locked in and we're motivated. 
What do you think has been the key to this team's success during your um, six-game winning streak? Mainly defense. Um, we know we can score against most teams, <clears throat> but uh, defensively it's been our calling card when we've won at the highest level. You know, we've usually been top five, maybe top ten defense, and I think in that span we've kind of hit those hit those numbers, and that gives us a great chance, especially on the road. And our record on the road has been great because of that. This team is uh, this young Rockets team was very close to you all a couple of weeks ago. There were some remarks that was made, but how much of that competitive fire fuels you all? That stuff helps, but we don't need any extra motivation. Um, we're a, a proud group of guys that understand we are capable of winning. We've played way below our level, I think, for most of the year. But for us to be in this situation where we have an opportunity uh, to keep hope alive and you know see what happens in a, in a couple of weeks to try to get into a playoff series, like. Just because we dug deep and, you know, this, it matters to us. And really, if if you don't have that drive internally, you're not really going to get it from me. It's all fake if you get it from somebody else. But it does help to hear some noise. Were you, were you clicking three empty bottles on the bench? Yeah, absolutely. Having some fun with it. How about the, uh, I mean, you celebrated a foul call pretty uh, substantially. What, uh, I guess, what was that about? Uh, yeah, just happy to get a call that I felt like was pretty obvious. There was one last game that I know there's like a still shot of Gafford all across my arms and the body and the whole deal, and I didn't get any, any free throws on it. Like, I'm not a foul baiter and not a guy that uh, tries or tried not to complain. It happens from time to time. But uh, you can also celebrate when it goes your way, too, uh, even if it's a little – out of place or demonstrative, but just having fun with it. How do you avoid like not letting, not getting calls take you out of your game? You had five free throws in five. Fifteen games. years of experience. <laughs> what do you say, Steph, about this young Rockets team? You've had a chance to see them a few times. What do you see in them? Physicality. I think uh, <clears throat> trying to form an identity around. You know, using their athleticism to their advantage, they're a team that you see it tonight. They I think they've got on a winning streak because they try to, you know, unleash their athleticism on the defensive end, try to, you know, force you into turnovers. Obviously, Jalen's playing at a high level these last 10, 15 games. And, you know, they they found something. And it's something to build off of, especially where they've been the last three years. So. There'll probably be a you know a problem to deal with in the next couple of years, but um, you know, it takes time to build that identity, and you know, obviously, you just you Doka's first year, so uh, I'm sure he'll have them in a pretty good place moving forward.